Hi there. Alan here. Well, I thought I'd just post a video of my new machine. I built this out of uh, all the metal parts. Like these are 3 16 pieces of uh, steel on the side plates. And these beams that the uh, X axis ride on. This right here is a half inch by two and a half inch steel beam where I took and I uh, used some PC7 to glue on these hardened shafts, these hardened rods that the bearings ride on. All the bearings are uh, is u groove bearings. I just got these covers on them. Can't really see them. I also glued on these shafts for the Z axis on, onto this uh, pipe. And the pipe, inside the pipe is the, uh, the spindle. Now that spindle is a um, Fordham flex shaft spindle. And this Fordham flex shaft is a uh, what they call a heavy duty uh, square drive flex shaft hooked up to a one third horsepower Fordham uh, router motor. Now I've got uh, two Y axis motors, and that's just Every time I ever lost steps in the past, it always seems to be the, uh, the y-axis. So I put two motors on there. Now this motor back here is the uh, x-axis motor. I built a little gearbox so that it attaches straight up to this 3 8 inch rod that goes to uh, the pinions which connect up to the racks. Rack and pinion on both sides. I just feel that that makes it a lot more solid on both sides. Uh, the Z motor is connected up to is run by a um, what, what's that called? Uh, whatever, this belt. And the wiring is all, I got plugs for all the wiring so I can unplug it, move the axis around when it's not running. Now here's my electronics box. I got a 24 volt power supply and a Planet CNC uh, controller with four Planet CNC um, drivers for each motor. And then of course I use the Planet CNC USB controller software hooked up to the computer. This is pretty neat. I got a, I made a little, a little box that houses the computer just to keep the dust off there when I'm not using it. Of course, I have to keep it open to keep it cooled off while I'm running the machine. And that's about it. Oh yeah, I have, I've also got this uh, 
This thing on here, a dust shield that I made, can basically, uh, it just connects, connects right on there. I got this stretchable fabric that is attached to the bottom of the, uh, the pipe. Works real good for cutting down the, the dust. And I also got these, uh, I just hooked up all the uh, stops. All the limit switches are just hooked up as one big uh, um, parallel uh, stop button. It's just like a big stop button. I got one on each side of the, uh, the Y axis so that it stops if it goes too far. I also got limit switches on the uh, X axis just for emergency. I also have a limit switch on the Z axis. Basically it's a piece of, uh, I don't know if you can see it, it's a piece of string that's hooked up. It goes back to this limit switch right here. So if the axis goes up too far, it, the string will get tight and, and trigger the limit switch. Also, if it goes down too far, it does the same thing. It's also important to note that all the motors have these uh, flexible couplers on them so that there's no load on the motor bearings. And I have uh, flange bearings around the... Uh, um, I keep on forgetting what these things are called. Um, <clears throat> it's belt... Oh, pulleys. Around the pulleys. <clears throat> and these, these side beams are... I think they're called C beams or or something um, I used a rails I put it on rails so that I could fit larger material underneath if I needed to um, now the spindle it has a heavy-duty square drive spindle that accepts quarter-inch router bits Um, now the Y, the Y rails, I have it connected to this, this beam in the back here with four screws. Um, I put a little tension on the beam by making one screw tight and then one loose. So one's kind of, so it's kind of putting a little pressure on this beam back here. Uh, my thought behind that is just to put a little tension on the uh, on this y-axis beam to see if it cuts down on vibration. I mean, I don't know if it works, but it gives me a little support for this for the wiring back here, anyways. Um, let's see. And, I started out, now these brackets here are from the hardware store. I use them for pipes and stuff in the plumbing section. And they're nice and solid. And I found that, you know, you get a lot less back and forth movement if I put in an extra one over here. Kind of stops it from going this way and that way. The table is completely made out of uh, plywood. Now I got plywood going this way underneath. Let's see. It's pretty solid. And then two by four by fours. And of course I just 
I routed down the waste board after I secured it on there and this waste board represents the size of the uh, material I can fit in which is 18 by 36 I could probably go to 19 and a half um, if I wanted to but it's cutting it kind of close for the uh, the limit switches and that's about it.